Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just about 1010 in Honolulu, 410 in New York. It is Tuesday, 16th day of May 2017 and this is the daily report for gold and silver. We do have a continuation of the rally which has been underway now for almost two weeks with gold and silver both trading higher on the day. Gold futures which is what we are currently looking at are uh, currently up about six dollars and sixty cents 1236.60 that is our current print in terms of our low today that would be 1230 even and our high 1239 and change a uh, gain of approximately a half a percent on the day over to silver tremendous gain in silver today up roughly 22 cents on the day, a net change of about one and a third percentage points, a pretty solid move, closing at 1682, most active futures. When we look at the low on the day, that would be uh, 1661 and a high of 8650, closing at 82. So as you can see, we've closed very, very close to the highs on the day. Platinum also gaining a very respectable one and a third percent, 941.50. And lastly, palladium actually trading lower on the day by about 345 at 793.55. So traders, as I spoke about on Friday, uh, this week, especially the beginning of the week, we do want to focus on our exit strategy uh, to our current trade as well as our stop placement. We're looking at most active gold futures contract closed at 1236.90, up about $6.90 on the day. We are looking at a Japanese average chart and this being daily candles. And we absolutely can say with some degree of certainty now at this point that we did experience or gold experience, excuse me, a key reversal in which the market moved from a basically a, uh, a bearish correction back to a bullish rally mode. Now, the key is, is to determine where in fact we might find resistance and where this market might stall at. I have two basic price points that I'm looking at. The first one is what I'm looking at in terms of our uh, shorter term minor levels of resistance and then our major upside target. Now realize our major upside target might not be achievable in this leg because my upside target is accounting for some peaks and valleys during the ride up. And just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at in terms of a price point is my all time or not all time, but my upside target right now based upon movements over the next couple of months is going to be to take out the most recent high that we achieved and that is just shy of 1300 and trade as high as 1333. 1333 in essence is a one to one extension from the rally that began at the end of last year, beginning of this year taking us up to about 1260. Then we have a subsequent correction taking us to 1193. You can see this line right here. That represents the starting point to our Fibonacci extension. And then I'm looking at uh, where prices would go if this wave here, this rally I should say, was equal to our current rally within peaks and valleys that we'll experience. So that being said, this is my upper target, 1333. However, before we get to that, we are going to have some certain areas that we're going to need to break through. The next real level that I'm looking at, and realize the market's trading at 36, 37, so we're not all that far off um, that particular price point, but uh, 1249, it's a 50% retracement. Above that is 1256, and then 1278, and then of course this top here. These are what I consider to be our minor levels of resistance. I don't believe we'll have any difficulty breaking through 49, even as, as far as 56. However, what I am eyeing as some real potential resistance is the 200 day moving average. That's this dashed line. If the market does continue to rise, I want to see how it reacts at the 200 day moving average because a solid break above that is very significant and it would indicate a move to the next level, which would be a 1270 to 1280. 
Traders, as far as our gold trade is concerned, maintain your current long position, maintain your current stops. As I said, we will look to move those up uh, midweek. Now, in as much as our gold trade is a pretty good trade in terms of where we're currently at, in terms of pricing and where we entered, which is at 1225, silver has really been taking off. Now, we entered our silver position at 1632. Market is currently trading at 1682. So we've got some distance at this point and some profits in this particular trade. Now, in terms of different levels of resistance in silver and our upside target, I draw your attention to this particular price point, 1684. I'll draw a line across that. Our high today, 1686. You can see that right in here where it does go into that area. We also can easily see on a technical basis at this area of support that comes in, this area of support that comes in. So this is a price point that has certainly demonstrated a, the ability on a technical basis to be a supportive area right in here and in here. We're really not seeing anything as it broke through this particular price point that's significant. However, we did have a high that achieved that. Just as I felt our first level in gold is not a major level of resistance, I think we should be able to get through that area without too much effort. And then on top of that is going to be 1718. That is going to be our next level. And then of course, these moving averages will come into play, the 200 day moving average coming in first. Let's see if the market has the ability to break above this current resistance area. And I believe it's minor and there shouldn't be difficulty, 1684, and then again, just above $17. Traders, maintain your current long position in silver, maintain your current stop. In other markets that we follow, the substantial rally that we saw today in the precious metals complex was entirely due to a weakening a dollar index. Dollar index off about three quarters of a percent, closing at 9806. When we look at the US equities markets, we had a mixed bag with the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, closing in essence unchanged on the day, down about two points, closing at 20,979. However, when we look at the NASDAQ composite, that was able to close at yet a new all-time record high. That almost sounds like a broken record, but nonetheless, we did see a substantial gain in the NASDAQ index, unlike the Dow Jones, as well as the Standard & Poor's, which closed uh, modestly or fractionally lower at $23.99. So traders, in terms of other markets that we do look at, there's two really uh, significant markets that I want to kind of focus on, on the trending markets portion of today's show, the dollar index as well as the NASDAQ composite. Looking at a daily chart of the dollar index, we spoke about the fact that on Friday, we had this market close just at the 200 day moving average. That is what this dashed line is. And then yesterday we had the dollar index open below it and close below it. Today we had a substantial sell off with the dollar index losing about a three quarters of a percent on a technical basis. I don't really see any major support in the dollar index till about 97. Therefore, I believe the dollar index could easily move down another full percentage point. And interestingly enough, with all of the uh, global geopolitical uncertainties, with statements made by Trump, with all of the events that are in the news, nothing seems to phase the uh, tech heavy index and NASDAQ composite from moving to continuous new all-time record highs. We're doing it again today, 6168.97, so call it 6169. The high on the day, uh, 6168.97, so we closed at the high. You can see that represented by this weekly chart. You can see that there's no upper wick, and we are now in uncharted territory yet for another week. Where is this market going to go to? That's anyone's guess, but as you know, I believe we are easily looking at, I think about 6,300, and that would be achievable uh, within the next three to four months.
Traders, I believe that our timing last week to initiate a long positions in both gold and silver was concise. I really believe that we hit a, uh, a key reversal or a pivot point, a turning point, so to speak. And I believe that we will have more profits uh, entering into our current trade as time goes on. I think there's more room to the upside for both gold and silver. So in conclusion, my recommendation is to obviously maintain your current long positions in both gold and silver, as well as your stops. As far as the gold-silver ratio goes, if you recall from the last couple of days, as the market was moving down, we had the gold-silver ratio widening because typically on the way down, you will see silver outperform gold in terms of percentage drawdowns, and that will widen uh, this ratio, of course, and it will the net result will be more ounces of silver to purchase a single ounce of gold. However, as the market moves up and silver outperforms gold in terms of percentage gains, you'll see a contraction in the gold-silver ratio. I'm looking for it to go back to about 71 and a half to about 72 and a half for those that have been working with this ratio. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.